Rosa Young made her life a living sacrifice to serve the poor children. Education in the poor and black communities is forever changed because of her resilience and great striving. Rosa Young is truly a great woman of faith. She is considered the mother of black Lutheranism in central Alabama. She planted dozens of black Lutheran schools and chapels in America before women were even granted the right to vote. She battled intense criticism, the Ku Klux Klan, and even an invasion of bull weevils. Later in her life, she helped found the Alabama Lutheran Academy, and many of her students moved north to found new churches, effectively extending her ministry all throughout the country. Rosie Young was born on May 14, 1890, in a rural community. The fourth of ten children born to an African-American Episcopal minister and his wife, both of her parents were former slaves turned farmers. At the time, Rosa's hometown of Rosebud, Alabama was the 55th poorest county in the nation, only having been recently liberated from slavery. The community struggled with poverty and prejudice towards its black members of society. From a young age, Rosa loved learning and had a desire to teach one day. She spent hours and hours reading the only book she had, the Bible. Young was a celebrated student, having won many awards for her scholastic achievements and becoming editor of the school's newspaper. This determined and idealistic young woman became known as a key leader in the Church of Segregated Alabama. Rosa had always wanted to serve her people as a teacher. There weren't many schools available to black children, but whenever Rosa was in school, she excelled. Rosa would finish her work in the fields as quickly as she could in order to get back to school. She loved to teach her brothers and sisters what she had learned after returning home. When she completed the sixth grade, the highest level of schooling available to her, she went back to picking cotton in the fields, praying to be able to become a teacher one day. With the help and suggestion of a benefactor, Rosa was able to attend Payne University. It was 54 miles away from her home. They were able to get the supplies and the funds together necessary to send her to the school. And she soon discovered that she was the only student from the country at the big city school. When Rosa began classes at Payne University, she was teased and mocked. A very trying time for Rosa, but she didn't give up. Over time, many students embraced her. In 1909, 19-year-old Rosa Young graduated valedictorian of her class at Payne University, an African-American Episcopal school in Selma, Alabama. In this speech, she said, Every vocation in life implies service. The talent we possess is for the service of all. Young received her teaching certification and passed her exams. She also published a booklet on her belief in Christian service based on her favorite Bible verse, Matthew 23, 11. The greatest among you will be your servant. Young believed that service was a divine privilege and duty for every man and woman. She believed that as a Christian, we were all called to give light to those who are in darkness and help the weak and poor. Young taught at several schools for African-American children across the state of Alabama. At that time, traveling teachers were common due to lack of funding. The teachers would travel from school to school so that they could remain open. In the segregated South, there was a significant shortage of capable black teachers and resources. School buildings were in such disrepair that children had to sit holding umbrellas when it rained inside the building. In her autobiography, Young wrote, Among these poor children were bright boys and girls filled with high ambitions, with marks of leadership on their brows, shining like diamonds. Rosa Young saw the potential in her students. She believed if that they were educated, they would be able to change their circumstances. Psalms 127 describes children as being like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Rosa devoted herself to training these children the same care an archer would take with an arrow, sharpening and straightening it, setting it into the bow, pointing it in the right direction, and releasing it. 
many of her children would go on to found churches and schools of their own, sending more arrows flying through the air, providing education and resources for those who couldn't afford it. Over the next few decades, Young continued to focus on education, both traditional and religious. In 1912, she was determined to start a private school in her hometown of Rosebud, with the financial support of both blacks and whites in the community. The school began with only seven students in an old cattle shed. Over the next few years, the school quickly grew, and they were able to build their first school building. When construction began, Rosa was able to find the teachers and supplies she needed to open the Rosebud Literary and Industrial School in October of that year. In its first year, they welcomed 115 students, which grew to 215 in its second year. This was a huge accomplishment and well-received in the community. Things were going really well for the new school, but then in 1914, the boll weevil showed up. This pest infiltrated the area and destroyed the cotton crop, the staple of their economy. Parents lost their jobs and couldn't afford tuition, causing them not to be able to continue sending their children to young school. The Rosebud Literary and Industrial School lost students and staff struggling to stay afloat. Despite Young's efforts in gaining funding from donors to privately fund the school, the school was on the brink of closing its doors. By the fall of 1915, Young was desperate and wrote to Booker T. Washington, who founded the Tuskegee Institute. Unfortunately, Booker T. Washington couldn't help. But Washington's personal secretary suggested she reach out to the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. It was a predominantly German church that had funded black Lutheran missions in the rural South, plus some parochial schools in Louisiana and North Carolina. This was the connection Rosa Young needed. They inquired for more information about her situation and then decided to establish a mission in Rosebud. Young was extremely cooperative, and the board sent veteran missionary pastor Reverend Nils J. Bach early in 1916 to check out the area. Bach became the superintendent of the school and oversaw its development. He also taught Rosa theology for two hours a day. Meanwhile, Rosa Young became a teacher and advisor to the school, giving the management and property over to the Lutherans. The Lutheran Church provided all the school needed to thrive, helping it to be successful. They added religious courses and biblical principles to the curriculum. They also talked with the community about starting their own Lutheran churches in the area. On Palm Sunday in 1916, 58 people were baptized and 70 were confirmed, including Rosa Young, becoming the first black Lutheran congregation and school in Wilcox County. The school was so successful that others became interested in the area for establishing schools and churches. Young and Bach worked together in visiting these locations and they became hubs for Lutheran congregations. She even traveled outside the area to tell other Lutherans about what was happening with the African American mission in Alabama. In the summers, Rosa Young would walk on foot to homes sharing the good news of Christ with the poorest of families. From 1946 to 1961, Rosie Young served as a faculty member of Alabama Lutheran Academy and College. The school she had founded, with the help of the Lutheran Church in 1922, was called Concordia College. Its mission was to educate and train future black Lutheran pastors and teachers for the Alabama mission and beyond. Young was given an honorary doctorate from Concordia Theological Seminary in 1961. She was a strong advocate for educating rural children and instrumental in founding and promoting Lutheran schools and churches. She founded 30 rural schools, a high school, a teacher training college, and 20 Lutheran churches. Rosa Young made her life a living sacrifice to serve the poor children. 
Education in the poor and black communities is forever changed because of her resilience and great striving. Rosa Young is truly a great woman of faith.